Danny, who will be speaking on the People's Congress and talk, some about, uh, talk about some of the exciting outreach that we've been doing in New Jersey, Long Island, and some other places that we don't hear about as much as NYC. So, Comrade Denny. So the idea behind the People's Congress of Resistance is that the billionaires, the oligarchs, the generals of their Congress, which is the officially recognized U.S. Congress in D.C., and that the people, the people who fight against gentrification, the people who fight against police brutality, the people that fight against imperialism, they need their own Congress, a People's Congress of Resistance. So that's why we're going down to D.C. so that we can unite all of the leaders from these different struggles. And tonight we heard an incredible presentation on solidarity in Colombia from Camilo and Kathy. And then we heard from Marina about all the struggles going on right here in East Harlem and across Harlem, the struggle for housing and our health care that's under attack right now. There's a lot of other activists who are in the room who we've been reaching out to. And the slogan we're really following comes from Lenin in the 1917 Russian Revolution when he talked about going broader and deeper to the people, to the working class. And New York City gets a lot of attention, but a lot of times it's, diff it's more difficult to get to Westchester County, to get upstate, to get out to Long Island, to get to New Jersey. So that's been one of our big goals. We're organizing in South Carolina, in Montana, in Wyoming, and in every nook and cranny, wherever there's white supremacy and homophobia and oppression across this country, we're there. So I actually want to recognize um, some of the leaders who visit us tonight from Long Island. Tenemos aquí presente un compañero centroamericano, eh, Guanaco, del Farabundo Martí, eh, para Liberación Nacional, el FMLN, a Roberto from Long Island. <laughs> So he had to go back to his family in Long Island. It was a two and a half hour commute. So he's just going to say. Gracias, buenas noches. La verdad, no hablo inglés. Pero si me entienden, pues lo que hablan, lo que hablan en español, lo pueden traducir, ¿verdad? Good evening, I'm going to translate because Spanish is my first language. Eh, soy militante activo del FMLN, del Frente para Mundo Martí para Liberación Nacional, FMLN New York. I'm an active cadre of the Salvadorian organization, uh, National Liberation para Mundo Martí. Este, es un orgullo, pues le doy las gracias por, por este, eh, estar aquí esta, esta noche, el compañero pues, Dani, pues, lo, lo logramos contactar por lo que fue en la, en la Marcha Verde. Es un honor de vivir, we met through another compañero internacionalista, Carlos, a Dominican comrade, because of la Marcha Verde, a massive um, anti-corruption campaign in the Dominican Republic against Daniel Medina and the corruption over there. Este, la verdad pues estoy aquí por el motivo pues de que también el FMLN pues, es un partido político de izquierda y, y estamos siempre pues juntos en cualquier lucha pues, social, ¿verdad? en cualquier injusticia. Esto, esta noche estoy solidarizando, solidarizando pues, con el pueblo pues, de, de Colombia. Eh. Our political party is a party that stands in solidarity with everybody who's in struggle in tonight. It's important to be in solidarity with the people of Colombia. Eh, también, pues, hace poco, hace como 15 días, estuvimos organizando lo que fue el Foro de San Pablo en Nueva York, el FMLN. Tratamos de contactar, pues, también organizaciones y partidos de izquierda acá en Nueva York, y fue bien difícil encontrarlo, pues, encontramos bien pocos. Pero veo ahora, pues, de que sí, pues, este, eh, hay que seguir, pues, en contacto, esa solidaridad, pues, junto para poder, pues, este, tener eso fuerte, de lo que podemos hacer nosotros de acá, pues, a toda Latinoamérica, Centroamérica y el Caribe, ¿verdad? Nosotros ahorita, pues, estamos tratando de seguir construyendo el Foro de San Pablo para hacerlo más fuerte para el siguiente año. Hay un comité que se ha estructurado, que quedó ya, pues, hecho, y creemos, pues, que también algunos de ustedes pueden ser partes. 
So about two weeks ago, we organized the internationalist gathering called the Foro de Sao Paulo, the um, Sao Paulo Forum in Brazil. And we were looking for different anti-imperialist leftist actors in New York. It was difficult to communicate, but now seeing all of your beautiful faces, um, <laughs> poetic interpretation. Um, I know there's a lot of leftists here who get involved, and for next year, it'll surely um, be even bigger. Ok, este, yo creo que por tiempo, pues, por la, eh, por tiempo limitado que tengo que viajar a Long Island con el compañero, pues, creo que solamente sería esto, pues, y agradecerle por esta invitación, pues, gracias, compañera y compañero, buenas noches. Gracias. 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 So, because Long Island is a little bit far for us, and, and we came out here, we have to go, so, buenas noches. And there they go, <laughs> perfectly timed. Um, but that gives you a sense of, of who we're meeting in the streets. And there's been so much anti-Salvadorian and anti-Central American propaganda and racism in Long Island and across this country focused on the MS-13, the MS-13. Very similar to what Kathy was saying and Camilo about the FARC, just the mention of the FARC. They try to criminalize you. And same thing with the MS-13, but at the end of the day, these are our children, these are our neighbors, these are our, our families, these are young people. Why do they end up in gangs? They end up in gangs because of social dislocation, because of poverty, because their communities in Guatemala, in Nicaragua, in El Salvador, were systematically destroyed in the 1980s by criminal U.S. bombing campaigns and clandestine wars. So we want to make these international connections to the domestic struggles that we have right here. So I'm just going to talk for a, a few more minutes about some of the people we've been meeting in Long Island. And Long Island is just a microcosm of what we're trying to do across this country. Another important case in Long Island is the case of Keenan King and Anthony Garriquez. These are two teenagers um, who were accused of having stolen a dirt bike. And then... They're both young African-American teenagers, young men, and um, the older brother of the quote-unquote owner of the dirt bike had accused them of stealing this dirt bike, got in his minivan, and went and tracked them down. And then uh, in the minivan, he cuts across traffic, comes into uh, the, 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 the traffic going this way, and he's going the opposite way, a crime unto itself. And he mows them down in the middle of the highway, killing both of them. This just happened two weeks ago. The killer was, uh, the murderer was a Marine who had recently uh, left the service, you know, ended uh, his service time. So we want to give a, a shout out to those families. Uh, we're in solidarity with those families. And if it wasn't for some of this outreach, uh, we wouldn't even know about this case because, of course, we know that the main newspapers in Long Island and in New York are not covering these types of cases. We also want to talk about Elizabeth um, Stenson. Elizabeth Stenson is a, a, a local hero from Long Island. Uh, she's somebody who overcame addiction and, and violence, and she had a seizure when she was driving, and there was an unfortunate accident, and she ended up in Suffolk County uh, Prison. And the guards, the COs, instead of giving her her medications for high blood pressure, they uh, would appear to be very intentionally neglected uh, Liz, Elizabeth Stenson, and she ended up having a, a massive heart attack um, and dying in prison. And when we started to look deeper into the history of Nassau County and Suffolk County, we saw that this was a pattern. Um, we saw it with Kenny Lasso and his family, another young man, an immigrant who was brutally murdered by the police a few years ago. So we've been in touch with Black Lives Matter in Staten Island. Tonight we also have two representatives from Redneck Revolt uh, out in Long Island. We want to give them... travel out there, you know, uh, and they can travel to us for three hours, we can certainly get out there and get to know Roosevelt and Bellport and other communities that I personally had never heard of um, up until about two weeks ago. 
Um, I just want to end with uh, one more case. Um, Dylan Caruso, a uh, young man, former baseball star, who suffered an unfortunate overdose, and we lost him about two weeks ago um, in Long Island. So we're trying to uh, meet with more families who've lost loved ones to what can only be termed an epidemic across this country, an opioid epidemic. Last year in 2016, uh, there were 66,000 deaths from heroin, uh, oxycodone, and what falls under this category of opioid addiction, including some of my own family members. So this is something that affects us across this country. And the mainstream media points the finger at the individual, but we understand that there's a social context to addiction. So many people who become addicts, they internalize that they're to blame, but there's a history of social trauma, of, of sexual violence, of, of family violence, and until we can sexualize these things and decriminalize the MS-13, decriminalize the addicts, and say a quote by Paulo Freire, you're not an alcoholic, you're not an addict, you're not a gangbanger, you're oppressed. And you have the potential to be a revolutionary. Right. And when we get all these causes together and, and bring them together in our unity, there's an incredible amount of strength. strength. So that's the importance of September 16th and 17th in D.C., for the People's Congress of Resistance. Welcome to everybody who we've been in the streets with before and um, everybody else who's, who's brand new to our office. Welcome.